Hi everyone and welcome to RenderReady.com. I'm your host Al Hack and we have a great 3D challenge in store for us today. For this episode we're going to mimic one of nature's most beautiful processes called water condensation on one of man's most delicious resources, energy drinks. Condensation is where water vapor collects together to form pure droplets of dew. After studying condensation in the shower for years, I've come to the belief that you need three things to create convincing condensation material. One, large water droplets. Two, small misty droplets. And three, water streaks. Without getting too far into geek talk, let's use an example to show how we're going to create this model. Pretend that the surface of this water is the side of the can. Now pretend that the bubble wrap is the geometry that we have displaced to look like water droplets. Now what we do is take our bubble wrap and insert it into the can texture so the droplets are the only things that are visible. Then we add additional material onto the can and hopefully this will be convincing enough to work. This tutorial will be primarily 3D using Cinema 4D. So here's the question, is this challenge too difficult? Will recreating nature's beauty be impossible to mimic? Only time will tell, but I'm glad you're here for the ride. This is Render Ready. All right, let's get this tutorial started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna download the start file for the canned condensation tutorial. So go to the website renderready.com and inside tutorials, look for tutorial number seven called can condensation. And in here, there is a little button right here that says click here to download the start file for this can for the can condensation tutorial. I did this because I didn't ask you to come here to learn how to model a can. I came here to show you how to displace water. And I don't want to waste your precious time. So I built the can for you. And you can check it out right here. So I mean, we need to do two things before we start. One is that the HDRI that was packaged, prepackaged with it, was huge. And I honestly can't set up 30 megabytes worth of stuff. I can only do 10. So being smart about this, in your content browser which is this button that looks like the world you can hunt down a free HDR map which I used on my particular um, uh, model just take that HDRI or HDR image and drop it down into your materials palette and we're going to use this to reflect uh, onto the can which will make it look ultra realistic take this HDRI and we're going to drag it up to this sky and just plop that on right there and let's make some fine little quick adjustments to this HDR image. First thing we're going to want to do is in the texture tab, there's a little arrow right next to it. We're going to go click on the image and in the filter, we're going to adjust the saturation down to 50%. The reason is, is we don't want all the yellows and greens to show up on our can, but we do like all the reflections, the lights and the darks. Then we're also going to set our mix mode to multiply and we're going to set this to about 50% so our reflection is not so intense. Finally, the last thing we're going to want to do is create our skin for our soda. So if you go to File, New Material, and then click on the... I created a little image called All in Citrus Edited 2. If you click that and open it up and paste it, in your can where it says can just drop that material right onto that tag and BAM there we got instant can right here and just so you guys know all in is an energy drink that is produced by one of my really good friends it's uh, zero sugar zero calories it tastes absolutely delicious you can order it online um, it's just an awesome drink. I would prefer the root beer, but that's my quick little plug for all in energy drink. Um, and you're going to be staring at this the entire time. So if you are, might as well go out and buy yourself a pack or two. So now that we got our all in energy drink, let's start talking about water condensation and what we're going to do to build that condensation. Uh, before we get there, let's just turn off these lights. So our rendering time is a lot quicker. And then go ahead and click on your can, copy and paste it. And then we're just going to delete these tags right here. 
and we'll copy this can one more time. And this can is going to called, be called can bump. And this other can is going to be called can displacement. Okay? And go ahead and click on the can bump. And there's a tool called center axis tool. If you click that, we're going to end up centering our axis um, on this polygon automatically. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scale tool and clicking in the center we're going to increase the size of our can bump to where our size equals 201 so it's like one centimeter bigger than everything else and we'll hold off right there but this is where we're going to put our bump channel and so let's move on to creating our bump channel so the first thing we're going to want to do is go to materials and create a new material we'll just call this can bump so we don't get confused and we're gonna do a couple quick things we're gonna turn off specular we're gonna turn on transparency and we are going to turn on bump now in our color channel we're gonna set this to black because it's cool and in transparency we're gonna add these following changes first we're gonna set our refraction rate to 2 what this is going to do is it's actually going to bend the light even though it's transparent, it's going to bend it so that we notice it, which is kind of the effect that you get when you look at a droplet of water. We're going to lower the brightness down to 95% because water is not 100% transparent, at least in my world. And then we're going to adjust the Fresnel reflectivity to 35%, mainly because when your reflections are too bright, uh, it looks very fake. Then we'll set the blurriness to 4, and then now we're going to move over to bump. And this is where the magic's going to happen. So uh, we need to create a noise shader that will cause little tiny droplets of bubbles to appear. And so in texture, and look at this kind of like in Photoshop. If you click in the layer, you can add multiple layers, stack them on top of each other, and create a beautiful composition and have that actually turn into your bump channel. So let's click the shader, and we're going to go to noise and inside Naki and it's right here now if I show you a huge version of it it's got kind of like waterish features but it just doesn't look right so we need to make some adjustments to it to make it look awesome first thing we're gonna do is set this to UV 2D and then we're also gonna adjust the global scale to 20 so now we got a bunch of tiny little dots everywhere this kinda looks like uh, the floor of a pool deck or something like that then what we're going to do is to get this dark low clip. So we're going to set our low clip to about 55%. And when I do this, you're going to see all the kind of darkish areas disappear. And only the really light areas are left. And all those light areas are deformed kind of like how water looks like on a can. Which kind of did most of our work. Um, we need to do a slight adjustment. We're going to set our brightness to 19%. And we're going to adjust our contrast to about 50. That way the dots come up and or, or our water droplets become really predominant. Now this isn't the only layer we're going to add. We're going to add one more uh, noise channel onto this. So go ahead and go to shader and noise and this is where we can start stacking like in Photoshop and in noise we're going to choose a noise called FBM we're going to set this to UV 2D and we're going to adjust the global scale down to 10. And this is going to be our tiny little uh, dots of water droplets with our larger droplets in the prior layer. So one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to adjust the low clip. So go ahead and increase your low clip to about 46%. Increase our brightness to 3 and this is going to create a lot of tiny little specks that are going to really look good for our bump channel. Now, of course, if I turn off the noise, you can see the big ones turn on. Now you see the small ones. If we go and select lighten, now we see both. And you can just kind of double check that right there. It's kind of cool. So next, we need to create the water streaks. And the water streaks are when the water bubbles get to uh, collect and they just start dripping down the edge of your can you kind of need that to sell the effect 
So what we're going to do is go to Shader, Surfaces, and then Tiles. And inside Tiles, we're going to make some slight adjustments. So click on your Tiles, and we're going to change Tile Color 1 to white. Then we're going to select Tile number 2 and change that color to white as well. So now we got white tiles and black grout. Now we're going to change the pattern. So move your pattern to lines 1. These are going to create vertical lines or horizontal lines. Real easy to change. Just select your orientation and turn those vertically. Finally, we're going to do some minor adjustments. We're going to set our grout width to 10, our bevel width to 70, and then we'll increase our U scale to about 150. Now, if we go back, we can set our tiles now to darken, or actually multiply. And you see we got these tiles that are going right over our water, so we're getting these streaks. But the streaks are perfectly straight, which is not exactly how they look in real life. This is an easy fix. Click on Effect, and then choose Distort. This is going to work at our noise scale to 50. And this will create really nice wiggly line streaks. And it's also going to adjust all our water uh, droplets. They look kind of cool. This is our bump channel. And we're just going to take this can bump and drop it onto here. So now that I got now that we got this can bump made and we displaced put this on this can, let's go ahead and group these two items together. And we'll call this can water bumps. And we're going to put this underneath the soda can. And let's set it so that the can uh, materials are above the can water bumps. Now for our can bump, we're also going to change this to cubic, and we're going to set this at 75 on the U and 50 on the length. Now let's do a quick render of this region, and you can now see the, process, the progress that we've made with just creating the bump channel. And this is looking really great. I mean, you could see where the water streaks are even in this pre-render as it's just bouncing light and seeing where it's going to be applied. But the reason why we can't use bumps for everything is because if you look at the edge of this can, it is perfectly straight because the bump channel is not really displacing the geometry. In order to really displace the geometry, we need to use subpolygonal displacement. But this is a good start to fill in that extra texture that we need to fill in to sell this model. So, knowing this, let's now create our sub-polygonal displacement. Go to File, New Material, and inside here we're going to create our displacement channel. What we're going to want to do is we're going to, of course, want to turn off our specular transparency turned on and displacement turned on. We'll set our color to zero and in transparency we are going to set our refraction index to three. We're going to turn off exit reflections and then for our Fresnel we're going to set this to 25. Then we're going to move over to our displacement channel and here we're going to select layer just like the, our other areas. We're also going to turn on sub-polygonal displacement, set this subdivision level to 3, and we're going to round our geometry. Okay. Now we're going to set our height to 2 because we don't want to have skyscrapers on, top of, on the side of this thing. We want to have uh, thing, uh, bumps that look like water. And in here we're going to create our layer shader. Now we're going to create our first uh, group.